God is absolutely unchanged, immutable. That's why when someone misused his free will, he became a non-incarnated spirit. And creation consists in helping those non-incarnate spirits get out of chaos, out of darkness, and get a manifest temporal form in order for them to begin the ascension back to the heavenly realm. All right. This potential, <laughs> that's interesting. This potential, is it possible to say that, uh, because I, I find it interesting, the fact that everything is possible, everything is in existence. I think those in the metaphysics, uh, the so-called new science, they talk about this a lot too. Okay, now we'll be talking of uh, manifestations that if you can, if you can think of it, if you can imagine it, then you can bring it to fruition. Maybe if we even take the Bible now, uh, God say, let there be light. We didn't see, okay, using the Bible now. We didn't really see God create a light. God just said, let there be light, and there was light. Which means, in that chaos that it was, in this soup in the beginning of creation, there was already light and darkness. He didn't really create light. He just manifested it, and it came to mm -hmm. be. Yes. So, yeah, it makes sense to me. It makes a lot of sense there. But who put this possibility there? Is it living out of uh, chance? Is it God that first created this, uh, this possibility that he himself manifests and all of us can also manifest? How did that possibility come to be those, that everything is possible? Help me with that, please. First, remember that potential existence is not true existence. That must be clear. I spoke about the world being in Lagos just now. Missiles are falling on Lagos, but don't look the news. It's just potential war. As long as there is not a general to take the initiative to make it manifest, it will remain potential and no, nobody will care about that. So potential existence is not an existence. Now, let's go back to the fundamental. We demonstrated, I stress the fact that we demonstrated that the Most High is transcendent and is indivisible. And we demonstrated that the Most High, the, the, because he is indivisible, the Most High expresses his wholeness in each one of his children. Now, by expressing his wholeness in a child, he's manifesting love, affection. Because God manifests infinite affection to an infinite number of children, he must be the principle, the source of affection. He must be love with uppercase L. So God is love, the principle of love. Second thing, we have seen that God is absolutely immutable. We have, we have demonstrated this. I stress the fact that the fact of demonstration because we are in a scientific religion. And since God is absolutely immutable, he can change his mind and say, okay, because obey he doesn't believe in me, I will take away the logos in him. I will take away my fullness in him. No, God can never deprive, deprive human beings of the logos because he is unchangeable, which means that God is eternally loyal to his children. That, that means that God expresses infinitely a quality of truth to an infinite number of children, infinite, an infinite number of children. So this means that God is truth with capital T. 
God is the principle of truth. Now, because God is love and God is truth, his love for you and me is a true love. A true love cannot be pushed by a gun. No. A true love cannot be compulsory. No. Because God loves us with a true love, this implies that we are free. It is that freedom which brings in the notion of a potential existence of evil. Because if they were not evil, then we are not free. Then there, there will not be a choice. Then there will be only good. But because we are truly free, as God is truth, God is love, then we have a choice. And because we have a choice, evil exists. That, that evil is only potential. And potential existence is not true existence. So beware, whoever will make that evil go from potential existence to manifest existence, he will be the responsible for that evil, that manifest evil. All right, that's great. <laughs> that's interesting. The equation is, uh, is very interesting. Um, but I have a question. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So... I read a book one time. The book is mm -hmm. called The Science of Getting Rich. So at the point, yeah. um, Wallace was saying that anything is possible. Anything is possible because uh, the thing that you use to create, the same substance that you can use to create things, is the same substance that God used to create us. And these substances are infinite. There is no limit to it. So we shouldn't live on scarcity. We should live on abundance in that there is enough for everybody in this world. Even if the population were to multiply, okay, I'm the one added this one now, or to times two, there is still enough to go around for everybody. Because we haven't reached the end yet of what we can create. Because the substance that you use to create things, they are absolutely infinite. They are infinite. Now, that leads me now to talking about God. Where did God get the material to create us, his children? Does it mean he manifested us from the abundance that is available? So we are object or the proceed of his manifestation. That's what I'm trying to understand there. There are two things here. I was first to clarify the, the things on visualization, which is what is thought about being rich. And then I will respond to your added the material for creation. So there are two things for me. Let me first think about visual, visualization. They tell that everything is there, you have just to fix your, your, your mentality on it and it will happen in our life. I don't agree with this. This is, this is not what is taught in Africa. The healing process, the spiritual healing process in Africa means going from perfection and denying the imperfection as being a mere suggestion. Let, us, let, let me give you an example. Someone came to me and told me, please, 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 I'm fainting, I'm fainting. I think that I, 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 I'm going to die, I'm going to die. I instantly told him that there is no death in the universe of God. And there is no fainting because man is the image of God just now. Just so, just now, you are well, you are fine. And what is being manifest, being trying to manifest itself as it is, is, is a suggestion coming to you and coming to me. I don't accept this and you don't have to. And instantly he told, he told me, I'm fine. It's all gone away. I'm fine. He has always been fine, but he didn't know it. I didn't do anything. I just awakened him to what he had already been. If you start from the point of view, 
that you are the image of God. And then has the image of God, everything is in you, then you will, you will not be working to get something, but to prove that you are perfect. That is correct. Visualization, had it is told by those people, is that you are imperfect. You lack something, but by having it enter your thoughts, it will appear in your experience. That's what I said is wrong. You start from imperfection. You start from mental imperfection in order to reach perfection. I don't start that way. We have to start from spiritual perfection. We are the image of God. And from that point of view, we have all we need. And we stick on these up to the point that the suggestion of lack, the suggestion of lack will disappear. Now let us go back to the, the material of creation. You have to understand that according to the chemical cosmological argument, that is according to science, because it is exact science. At the beginning, before the beginning, God already existed with his children. When the children of God turned away from, from God, that is, he used, he used his bad, his free will, what happens? What happens is a dream. He falls in a dream. That's the way you should understand this. We have fallen in a dream. What the creator did, he put himself also in a dream. But the difference between his dream and our dream is that we are not conscious of dreaming while he knows that what is going on in a dream is a dream. So when he came, he only, he only managed to have people understand that it is a dream. So people are waking up to the reality. What is going on is waking up to the reality. It is not a new material being implemented? No. It is not a new material be, which be, is being used? No. The same material. We are now children of God in heaven. Now. Not we shall, we will be. No. Now we are in heaven. What is going on here is just a dream. So we are awakening from that dream. So there is not new material. That's why the chemical cosmological argument proved to us that reality is spiritual. There is not material, material things. There are no material substance that is false. There is only one substance, the spiritual, and we have to awaken to that reality. Thank you. I like the, the subject of awakening. And I also thank you also uh, for your explanation, for responding to all this curiosity. Well, I just happen to ask a lot of questions. Well, that is why also I'm here. And that is why you are watching me out there, because I ask questions and I love it. Yes. All right. Now, for people that are listening to you, uh, they might want to know more about you. They might like to read your books. They might like to, uh, uh, why don't patronize you? So I want you to use these few seconds to promote yourself. How can people connect with you? How can people uh, buy any of your book? Uh, please go ahead and do that. Yes, yes, an African priest, an African Nganga, as we say here, I make a research. I initiate people to the African, to the practice of African spiritual, spirituality, which is essentially the practice of spiritual healing. And there is so I, I initiate people to that practice. And also I have written books. My books are available at Amazon. So you can get at, at Amazon. I just Google my name at Amazon, search Luya Luca, and you will see all my books are available there. If you want to patronize me, you can write me. My email is Kia Tezua, that is K I A T E Z U A L L 
at yahoo.fr or you can just if you forget you can just ask the question for the comments on this uh, video and i'm going to give you this information i thank you so much you're welcome sir before i ask you the last question i want you to uh, say something about your name luya luca tell us something about it. what does it mean what does it signify my name is Kiatezwa Lubanzaju Luya Luka. First, the, 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 the funny thing is that Kiatezwa is the name of my father, Lubanzaju is the name of my mother, and Luya Luka is the name of my great grand, my grandfather, the father of my father. So that name, Luya Luka, is what we call him Humbu and Humbula. It means that my ancestor Luyaluka is supposed to care to, to protect me. So truly my name is Luyaluka. Now Kyatezwa means that something that, that has been judged, that, that has, has been measured by God. God has measured that thing. Kyatezwa. Lubanzadio means think about it. Think about it because that thing has been measured by God. And Luyalu come in, so you evil spirit, get away. <laughs> That's powerful. I, I love that. That's powerful. I, I know that there were going to be deep significance to the day, but thank you so much for really explaining it to us. Yeah, I know. Thank you welcome. Thank you so much, sir. All right. So, what would be your final thought here in this conversation uh, where we talked about uh, spirituality and religion in nation Kemet? Uh, how would you conclude it? My final thought is that spirituality and religion is about regaining how lost manifest nature has children of God. We are children of God, and the practice of the spirituality of our ancestors consists in purifying our thoughts in order for us to become back to manifest children of God we have been. To be a children of God means that we have all the good that, God, that belongs to God in us. We have the right to live these goods. And the way to this, the highest way to this is the purification of thought. And let us also remember that that religion of our ancient is an exact science. So we have to bring back that dimension of our of the religion of our of our ancestor in present trends of African traditional religion. This will bring the true elevation of Africa. Will we this will bring the Pan-Africanist unity that we are seeking since the time of the Web Du Bois and others, Afri African Pan-Africanists. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it. This has been really very interesting. Thank you. Welcome.